radio station anywhere. We are LA Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Cannabis Nation with your hosts, Mike Budin and Julie Rose, right here on LA Talk Radio. Welcome, Cannabis Nation. And welcome to Cannabis Nation. It's time for an honest conversation about marijuana. Listeners can go to the guest info page on our website, CannabisNationRadio.com, to get more information about tonight's guest, Mark Potts, and be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Reform Warrior. Yeah, you know, when people are asked to describe themselves, somewhere near 80% respond with, I'm an American. And that sounds okay on the surface, but, but what does it really mean? Does it mean that we all agree? Not so much. Does it mean that we're all patriots again? You know, not really. So how can we all say the same thing or say, yeah, say the same thing and mean something different? Well, Mike, maybe we need to go back to what it is that gave us our identity, the United States Constitution. The founders set out for us a system of checks and balances that seem now to be somewhat overdrawn and lopsided. But the Bill of Rights has become a Bill of Maybes with many provisions apparently being set aside. Yep, all too true. And here in Trinity County, excuse me, we've had some of these issues come to a head recently. Uh, In in 2010, we elected a new sheriff uh, upon the retirement of Lorac Craig, who was a respected and effective leader. Uh, And just before his retirement, he'd been asked by the district attorney here, Mike Harper, to muzzle a member of the Trinity County Sheriff's Office, uh, for writing his personal views in the newspaper, and uh, to Mr. Craig's credit and character, he refused. Yeah, Mike, it's my understanding that the new guy, Bruce Haney, who ran on a Patriot campaign channeling, in his words, quote, the Nye County guy, unquote. This is referring to the Nye County, Nevada sheriff who stands up to the feds under the threat of gunfire. However, it wasn't long before the, quote, Nye County guy, unquote, flip-flopped over into the role of Punisher. Yeah, you know, along with denying good people the right to their Second Amendment protections, uh, he said about trying to deny a member of his department uh, that member's First Amendment rights. Mark Potts is a distinguished military veteran who also had an honorable career in law enforcement uh, up until that time and, as it turns out, is an active member duty of LEAP. Uh, or law enforcement against prohibition, which, you know, as many have listened to this show have heard me say, I love LEAP. And, and I've always said I wish I could find more guys who are actively working that were LEAP members. So here we have one. And, and Mark, over the years, has expressed his constitutional views, uh, his personal views of what the Constitution means in the Trinity Journal on on a range of issues. And uh, the most troublesome for his boss is his view that the drug war is a sham, and in particular that the war on weed is a waste of time and money. And so voicing these views became a fight for his job and, a first, uh, and his First Amendment rights uh, as he was reprimanded by the new administration. But Mark is a fighter, to no one's surprise who knows him. He took on the county and federal court and won. But before I welcome him, let me state that Mark's views do not necessarily reflect the views of his employer, uh, the Trinity County Sheriff's Department, and we cannot talk about operational aspects of the department or specific cases. So having said that, welcome to Cannabis Nation Radio, Mark. Hey, hey, Mike, how we doing? Yeah, awesome. Welcome, Mark. Hey, so uh, I was... Super, super, we're doing great. Hey, I always like to start out with the obvious, you know, uh... Uh, so people that don't know you, I personally do. I, I know Julie doesn't. Uh, tell us about Mark Potts. How did you become a cop? You have a long military career. Uh, you know, there's a history besides you being a Trinity County uh, deputy. Yeah, I grew up a small town boy in, in the Midwest in farm country. And uh, at a young age, I joined the military. And over a 23-year career, I, I served all over the country and all over the world. And uh, after I completed that uh uh, career, um, law enforcement just seemed like a, a natural fit for someone with my skills. I didn't, uh, as a civilian, I, I retired from uh, Army Special Forces, and there's not a lot of skills for, or a lot of jobs that uh, need my skills. 
so law <laughs> enforcement was a, was a natural fit for me. Right, as long as you're going after real bad guys, right? Absolutely. Which some of the guys do you go after? Granted, I, I'm happy that when you guys go out on the on the forest and you take care of cartel guys. Uh, I'm all about that. I might be getting ahead of myself here a little bit, but uh, and, and I know that 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 your views never ever caused you to not vociferously go after any of those people either. But how how did you come to your views on on marijuana and the war on drugs? Was it over time? Was there an epiphany somewhere? I was just over time, and specifically actually doing the job, being on the front lines of fighting the war. I, after doing it day after day after day, uh, you know, you see what folly it is. You're you're making no difference in the the amount of, of drugs on the streets, and we spend money and money and money and time, and put people in jail, and the courts are full, and the jails are full, and and. Um, we've we've fought this war on drugs for 40 years, and and what where are we now? We, there's there's more. It's easy, ac- easier access to drugs on the street than it was when it was started, and and we've just piped a whole lot of money down the drains and 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 lives, making felons out of people that want to grow a product that uh, people wish to consume. Is it? But is it really about getting drugs off the street, or is it about earning money? Do you think? Well, it, it has been historically. Uh, everybody thinks it's bad, and, and for most cops doing it, they just that's their job. And when I was in that position as a narcotics officer, that, that was my job. I, I was tasked with doing it, and I did it with uh, with vigor. But uh, for most cops, it's just part of their job. Um, as of late, though, I've seen uh, more and more agencies are now are looking at as that forfeiture. Uh, proceedings right. as a way to to make get money off of the deal. I mean, the, they see the uh, the growers making money off of it, so they figure they'll cash in on that as well. Yeah, right. yeah. I noticed that. Uh, I I I think that uh, in our county, and uh, I'm not really sure you got to walk the fine line because uh, uh, I think that your personal views as a sheriff is what makes it so compelling you know being able to separate that out but i really think that our department it looks to me uh maybe in league with uh harper the da uh seem to think that the best way to go after marijuana in our county now whether it's medicinal whether it's black market whether it's cartel is to employ dogs and asset forfeiture and and i got to tell you that 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 I really think if that runs out to its conclusion, we're just going to end up being known as a county uh, called a shebang. And back in the old west, they had a, a saying, and that's what you know. You went through a town, and, and there were a lot of people there that would take your belongings and and maybe up to and including your life. You know, they would take the whole shebang. And I really, it, it's it's really, oh man, I just hope we're not going down that road. Well, I see it. Uh, it's 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 not just a local issue. It's 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 uh, police agencies or law enforcement agencies all across the country. They they're all seeing the benefit and 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 trying to uh, sharpen their tools or put more tools in the toolbox with which to go after uh, m- marijuana growers. And and the, and the dogs uh, allow them to get into places that they otherwise would not be able to get into without a search warrant. Yeah. I'd be interested hmm, to know. That's scary. I'd be interested to know how many times dogs actually don't alert. I, I'm not sure we can quantify. That's uh, a whole other show. Probably talking about dogs and some of the monkey business. Well, I, I do know there's there's uh, two cases, two dog, canine cases, uh, dog sniffing cases that are going before the Supreme Court of the United States here shortly, uh, based on whether or not uh, they provide the officer with probable cause to conduct the search. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, probable cause, boy, that's another thing. Go ahead, Julie. Yeah, yeah, and I know that it's real easy to give a dog, uh, to get get a dog, to prompt a dog to give a false, you know, positive or false reaction. So I think that's some of the argument is that it's really the handler, you know, the way that the dog's being handled, a handler can get the dog to give a, an alert. That's possible. I, I've never uh, been a canine handler, so, so you know some of those details. It, it seems like 
I, you know, I'm not privy to some of the details on the on the dog training, but. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's like anything else. I think you know what the, that there's a lot, an awful lot dogs can do, and I think that there's an awful lot dogs are encouraged to do. But uh, you know, aside from that, uh, I mean, we can talk about all these topics. But you know, one of the things that I really do want to focus on, as it occurs to me, we're talking about asset forfeiture, and and uh, I've recently read in the paper that. Uh, that they had seized over somewhere near three hundred thousand dollars here in the last few months, and but then also in the paper this week I read right here in this story it says county must pay pots legal cost. They're talking about you, a hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars, not to mention the hundred thousand dollars that they had to pay to get an out of county uh, attorney to litigate their position. Actually, All because, I suspect it might. It could be more than that, Mike. That that's just what they allotted. They allotted a hundred thousand dollars for yeah for defense. <clears throat> so my my be, my attorneys alone were one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and they they hired uh, high speed attorneys out of the Bay Area as well. So I suspect that it might have uh, exceeded that one hundred thousand dollars <laughs> allotted as well. Right. So we we we're going to spend all of this money to attorneys uh, because one guy decided, or a few guys decided. That somehow you were hurting their mission by speaking your own mind on constitutional matters, because truthfully, uh, I was always behind you on that. And as a matter of fact, when I was still actually talking to the to the current sheriff, uh, I'd actually was on the phone with him right after the election, and and you had posted some uh, or had submitted some letters to the uh, to the journal, and I read them, and I commented to the sheriff that I was actually very much respectful and and appreciated the fact that he was uh allowing you to continue on as you had and even though he suggested to me that he thought that was pretty disrespectful of you he didn't indicate to me in any way that he was going to go around trying to like apply a bunch of of you did wrong codes and put a mark on your career and tell you to shut up i, I was really astonished by that well, I take issue with uh, the premise that uh, he, he uh, that, that he felt he had to give me permission to express my my opinion in the first place. <laughs> right, right. I, I, go ahead. James. Well, I mean, because there should be, uh, you know, at work is work, and when you go home, you should have a right to. I mean, this is freedom of speech. Absolutely. As long and as I it guess doesn't that, compromise I guess the mission. That, 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 the uh, the, the, courts agreed the, the with policy us. in which he used to uh, to reprimand me uh, really does there's not a problem with the policy it was with the application right because i mean it would be wrong if you were if say I was, if, yeah if i was to go out and give some information up on an upcoming search warrant or or some some type of uh a, a, an inmate movement or something that could yeah, absolutely you know that would apply but not for my my personal opinion on uh, matters of public concern. Right, exactly. Right. And, and and then you have to ask yourself, what's the mission then? If if in particular your views about the war on drugs uh, and marijuana, if if that's somehow going to compromise the mission, then what are we to to uh, take away from that? That the mission of the department is is it then just to go and and jackboot everybody involved with marijuana? Oh, I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, how is it? I, I just really don't see how it's. Uh, I think it's put more of a split and caused you guys harm in the sense that uh, before, at one time in this county, we had an understanding that there were two kinds of marijuana growers: that they were sheep and they were goats. And now there's no distinction. Everyone's a goat. Okay. Are you still there, Mark? Yeah, I don't know what to I don't know what to say about that, Mike. Oh. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Maybe I was just having. A you know, I'm curious. I'm curious when you say that it's costing a hundred and two hundred and twenty thousand dollars at least. The county. What is the county budget? Well, they don't have money to do that. I can tell you that. And and I and they, like I say, that's that's just for the the lawyer fees. That, that I didn't even sue for monetary 
uh, gains. Right. So it, you know, it had to be close to a quarter million dollars. I don't know the exact amount that uh, their attorneys charged them, but I suspect it was at least the 100000 they budgeted for and probably more. Which, right. by the way, I, I think that the fact that you didn't sue for money uh, says a lot about your character and says a lot about what your real purpose was, and it wasn't about the money. But it wasn't about the money, and, and the whole thing with the money uh, – I might have went. For, I might have went for money if I could uh, hold accountable those who needed to be held accountable. But ultimately, who will have to pay the bill are the taxpayers, and I did not want to burden the taxpayers with a bill because of some uh, elected officials' uh, malfeasance. Yeah, I think we could have a lot nicer and uh, and uh, a more agreeable. Sure, because uh, you know, I, here's what I remember, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I remember about maybe seven or so years ago, Mr. Harper was losing marijuana cases, and rather than just accept the fact that people are reticent to convict anyone for marijuana in Trinity County, he decided that because Trinity County doesn't have an official protocol, because at the time the protocol was 12 per person. It was unofficial. It wasn't codified anywhere. If you looked it up on the Internet, it said six. Now, was that pre uh, People v. Kelly? Uh, yes, absolutely. And and then this uh, this number got codified by the Board of Supervisors, and then there was a subsequent article in High Times, and the whole stinking thing took off like a brush fire. And now that some people. You know, some of the sheep decided to try to help people, and they have little operations here and there. Now we have the same district attorney who has a new sheriff, and it looks like they're starting to make asset forfeiture their game. I don't know how ominous that can look to people, uh, but it looks pretty ominous to me. Well, on the, on the subject of asset forfeiture, I, I find it a very perverse way to conduct law enforcement uh, activities. It, it's, it's, in my opinion, it, it's stealing. It's the legalized theft. It's like gang activity almost. Well, yeah, we put uh, cops put people in jail for stealing someone else's property, and 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 for the cops to think they can do it, uh, it, I, it just it's and and not only that, it, it brings with it the corruption. You start uh, uh, prioritizing your targets for based on how much money you can exactly from from the activity, which is a very okay. perverse way in which to uh, perform right. law enforcement activity. Right, and that's a good time. point. Because yeah. probably, probably some of the, I imagine that probably some of the most damaging um, characters that you might have in your county aren't even maybe so much pot. But I mean, do you have a problem with crack there or meth? No, our, our main problem with uh, uh, white drugs we refer to is, is uh, methamphetamine. It's 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 actually people don't know it because it's not as visible as the marijuana. But, but right. I would say it's as prevalent, if not more prevalent, than marijuana in the, in our county. Really? Right. Oh, it's yeah. bad here. And guess what? The thing is, is here's the problem with people, is they, they don't know how to separate it out, okay? Because everybody that does meth probably also has marijuana. They think, therefore, anyone that has anything to do with marijuana must be that kind of a person. It's just It's just so bad. You think well, that's just, it, so, it, Mark, it, what was it like after without, you brought the lawsuit? Without sounding judgmental, it's, it's just ignorance. Uh, the, the, the people just aren't aware of how much of a white dope methamphetamine problem we we have uh, locally. It's huge. They, and all they see and all we, all the talk and all the newspaper, everything's about marijuana and, and the methamphetamine problem, which, like I say, is just as bad, if not worse, is, is not even – is barely get, gets a mention. And those folks typically are the ones that uh, rise our crime rate – more so than, than any of the marijuana growers. All right, well, because of property crime. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the ones, uh, the, the, the crankers, cranksters are the ones out running around stealing stuff in the middle of the night so they can buy their next dime bag. Right. Right. If marijuana, if anything to do, uh, here's what I always like to say. I like to say, I believe it, that the only way marijuana and crime belong together in a sentence uh, are, is if you're describing the theft of someone's. So help, I mean, where is the crime in anything related to marijuana? Where's the victim? 
there is <clears throat> there isn't one but uh um and i'm a i'm a big advocate of uh crime the only crimes uh, possible have to have a victim involved and uh and if you possess or are use a substance uh, there's no there's no victim there so in in my view it is not a crime All right what was it like after you filed the lawsuit as far as at work? Was, what was the environment at work like? It was actually better. Really? Uh, prior, prior, while, the, while the whole thing was going on, they, everybody was at each other. Well, not really at each other's throat, but uh, I, I couldn't do anything without somebody pulling me in the office and, and talk, you know, counseling me or whatever. And after the lawsuit, they, they, it showed them that, oh, wait, maybe he does have the right to do this. So now it's been, I haven't had any problems since. Hmm. Oh. So actually, huh. it's it's better. Hmm. Oh, well, that's uh, good. I'm su- I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a hard one to figure too. Because see, here's the weird thing. I mean, I don't know a lot of these guys like Mark does. I, I don't know everybody in the county. I've had a lot of contact with people in the public forum, not not because I'm a bad guy and I run into a lot of cops, but, you know, they always post a few at the meetings. Sort of gotten to know a bunch of guys over the years. But I I I can't imagine people can't see. I just don't understand why people, and especially a lot of law enforcement, can't see that... Like I say every week on this show, if we can't keep drugs out of maximum security prisons, and here lately, I guess, out of the Trinity County Jail, how are we going to keep them lately. out? <laughs> how are we going to keep them off the streets? Right? Come on. Yeah, it's a I, crazy I concept. Uh, the, the people that think you're going to keep it away from people are are just living in a in a different world. Because, like you said, the big analogy, you can't even keep it away from inmates that are incarcerated in prisons and jails. I mean, you can keep it away from the general population, no matter how many laws you have on the books. Right. Waiting for you to jump well, in. Well, I just read an article recently. Some of the jails actually in other countries like it when they bring pot into the into the jails or prisons because it mellows out the prisoners. <laughs> right, calms them down. We, we, we have the TVs for that. It, it, it kind of drones them out so that they're they're not beating on each other all the time, although we, <laughs> there are always issues with that. Oh, my oh, word. I well, just... I imagine, would you, well, let me ask you this. Would you rather bust a, a, a pothead or a drunk? Uh, drunks are the worst. You you cannot reason with them whatsoever. And, I, and yeah, here's an yeah. analogy to 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 to, to show you. Uh, uh, we used to work the tribal stomp that they have here in the county every year, and uh, we don't want any more. They've come to the conclusion that uh, you know that basically the guys that put it on really don't want it. So, but but during those years when we did, I, I worked it every year, and, and for all the people that come together and, and smoke marijuana and maybe do some other assorted, you know, mushrooms or whatever, they were, from my experience, they were always so kind and 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 having a good time and and offered things to drink and eat, and it, and it seemed like the only problems we ever had at the tribal stomp was when somebody showed up they'd been drinking. Yep, I can imagine. Yep, there you go. It's uh, and that's a funny thing too, because you know what? How can Mar- I, I think you wrote a uh, an article about this. I, I actually didn't catch it, but how can marijuana prohibition even be legal when it was never made into an amendment and ratified? You know, it's, like it's absolutely at the federal level, it's absolutely prohibited. Just just like you you you, and I did write an article. Uh, I don't know, probably a couple years ago. Uh, using in the analogy of the 18th Amendment, which prohibited alcohol, uh, at least back when that uh, amendment was passed uh, and they made it illegal, which was in the 1930s, they uh, or excuse me, I believe it was uh, might have been 1919, I believe. But uh, at least then the federal government realized that they didn't have the authority to make it illegal, so they did it the right way and utilized Article Five of the Constitution, which is the amendment process. They amended the Constitution and thereby made it illegal the right way, the only legal way to make it illegal. Right. Now they they don't they don't uh, the Constitution is just a an old faded document that uh, a piece of history. They they don't abide by it at all. They just do whatever they want to do. 
Well, I see a lot of people argue about it in our paper, and, and I mean, you're not the only one that writes in there about constitutional issues and, and stuff, and I see that a lot of people, you know, stick their chest out and, and they call names and this and that, but I don't understand how uh, it can be really interpreted uh, from any other viewpoint but from the libertarian viewpoint, from the viewpoint that we don't want to have that happen again. Well, there's a couple of clauses in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, that the, the, the statists like to use that uh, grants them carte blanche authority to do anything and everything, the General Wildflower Clause and the Commerce Clause and the ne pro Necessary and Proper Clause. They like to, to expand those far beyond what, they, what they're designed to do, and, and <laughs> like the General Wildflower Clause, so they, they – feel that the, the federal government is free to do anything and everything they want to do as long as it benefits the general welfare of the people, which renders the Constitution null and void. I mean, the whole thing could be one sentence. The, the Congress shall have the power to enact any legislation for the general welfare of the people, which is obviously insane and not what the founders envisioned. Right. I mean, because they could say that, you know, well, we're imprisoning uh, marijuana users, you know, for the general welfare, when actually, uh, if I was pressed to have to make my case, I could show that the only harm that comes from having marijuana is when you mix a cop into the equation. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the only time. So, oh, boy. Uh, and, they, and of course, and, and another analogy as far as the health and safety issue, uh, I, I can't, uh, I've never heard of a single case of marijuana killing a single person, but uh, prescription medications that Big Pharma put out, the petrochemicals that are christened and blessed by the federal, uh, the FDA, uh, they kill 300,000 Americans every each and every year. Well, no, legally prescribed by a doctor. I'm not even talking. That doesn't even uh, take into consideration the, the the abuse of those substances. You know, well, that just goes to show you how powerful stigma is. It goes to show you how powerful propaganda and misinformation is. Is that in an age like we are in now, where information is almost instant, and as long as you're willing to fact check a little bit. You can find out what you want to know, and yet we still have people that try to say the Earth is is flat. Sure, but and and uh, they're they're still working on the uh, internet, you know, shutting that down and controlling that because they they don't want people to be educated and informed. They they want to be able to control it all so that you only get what they want you to know. Yeah, I'm gonna end up. In that's gonna that's gonna be a nightmare if they if they make that happen to where they control the internet. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's a real. That's a real. We don't want to go there. That's not going to be good for anybody. No. Doesn't keep them from trying to do it, though. It's already kind of controlled in a marketing sort of a way because I'm, I've talked to my friends and, 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 you know, I travel around. And, and, and it's really funny how you sort of notice that if you Google something, uh, you'll get, like, certain ads and stuff that pop up. But yet if your friend that lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, like, you know, call him on the phone and go, hey, man, Google this, and he Googles it, it'd be like totally something different, right? It, it's, it, they have it very well tailored, uh, you know, to like your, your searches and what you're about online. And, and none of your browsing is, is, is private. With, <laughs> right. with the Patriot Act and the NDAA, they're, they're watching anything and everything you do. Every, every website right. you surf, the government, Big Brother's watching you, you're, 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 you're there's no privacy whatsoever. Yeah, someone right. suggested to me today that there might be like maybe as many as a couple hundred people on my Facebook profile that might be some sort of government spook or law enforcement agent. And, and I replied, ha, ha, I count on that. Who do you think I'm talking to most of the time? <laughs> So anyway, I do have a question for you. I don't want to beat up on the new guy too much, but here's uh and maybe I do. You know, well, let's start with a different qualifier. Here's the thing. I'm going to uh for full disclosure say that uh in 2010 I supported you for sheriff. Uh we don't need to get bogged down into the details of how you didn't happen to become sheriff, but uh are you willing uh have you ruled out running again? No, I have not. I've been approached by some people that uh, want to put me up there and, and, and make that happen. And, it's, and I'm, 
I, I, I would be more than willing to do it if, if there's enough interest. Uh, it's not, like I've told people, it's not really a position that I aspire to. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't aspire to hold that job. And actually, my wife wants me to retire, but uh, if enough, if there's enough interest and people want me to do it, I would do it for the people, not, not for me. Excellent. So having said that, then here's my question, because this is sort of a policy issue, because to tell you the truth, uh, I think that, you know, there was some flip-flopping going on. I don't think I got the Nye County guy. I really don't. And so my question for you is, how did the United States Forest Service become an extension of a sheriff's administration that ran on opposing the federal government? Well, I, I think it's just a continuation of, of, of how previous administrations have, have, have acted uh, in a department where you're Resources are limited. Uh, they reach out to whoever they can and use whatever resources they, are available to them. Well, I wonder if if anybody here. See, here's my actually my problem with it is that you know I'm all for these guys. You know, like doing whatever. If if you're in a Forest Service rig and and you're a Forest Service cop and you see a guy weaving all over the road, you know what? Uh, nobody's going to fault you for that for for enforcing that law. Uh, but you know what? When you see federal... Only if, if it's on a Forest Service road, correct, not on a state highway. Well, I have a problem with that. Well, I kind of do, too, but my point I'm getting at is, is I don't think you're going to get much traction saying the guy should have just drove off and let him go. You know well, no, what I'm the, saying? The, 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 the issue that I, I have is, is uh, federal law enforcement officers uh, enforcing state laws. That's my problem. Yeah, and I was going to get to that because I, I you know, and, I, and I'm being a little bit self-serving here. I, I did have a run-in with one, and and the thing that bugged me about it the most was this. I, I really wasn't, you know, some big criminal and this and that and the other thing. I wasn't even in possession of of a controlled substance, but the pickup that I was driving apparently had something alleged to be cannabis, and so this guy writes out some stuff on a state ticket, and then he separates out the marijuana onto a U.S. District Court ticket. And I thought that was really kind of uh, hen house, and I thought that it smacked of, you know, I know that it'll get, I know the will of the people of California is that it will get thrown out in state court, so I'm going to go ahead and get you on the federal thing. And, and here's where I'm going with all of this. When I went to the first hearing for that thing this courtroom was full of people that looked exactly like me and their whole back wall was full of united states forest service department of agriculture tree cops blm cops federal cops and when i was sitting around listening to all of these defendants i heard the word marijuana a lot there has got to be something else going on out there on federal property more important than people possessing a small amount of marijuana. Well, I don't. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe we need an agreement with them that says, okay, look, if you're going to, you know, charge something, you have to charge it all under state law or all under federal. No more of this, you know, oh, I get to decide. No, I, the, the, my, my answer to that is, is uh, as a sheriff, I would revoke their state authority. They have no authority within the confines of Trinity County to enforce any state law or, or uh, conduct any law enforcement activity anywhere with outside the bounds of the national forest or off of federal what? land. What about where they say it? Goes? They only they only do that with the permission of the sheriff of the county. Some ca some counties do, have not given the Forest Service uh, state authority, and, and 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 the feds hate that. But uh, that that's that's uh, they only do that with the consent of the sheriff. They don't do it otherwise. They have no authority to do it without the. Oh permission well, that explains a lot right there. Well, because they say that where there's Forest Service on both sides of the road, that their jurisdiction is underneath the state highway, and that's how they had the right to pull you over. Although, you didn't really knowingly enter into federal jurisdiction. I mean, there's no sign that says, you know what, watch your ass, because it's ours now. I don't get it all. Well, well beyond, beyond that basic argument is um, a much larger problem of... of uh, what, based on what constitutional authority does the federal government own a single acre of Trinity County for the purposes of, of a national forest? Uh, it's, it's not in the Constitution at all. 
Hmm. Was it an executive order that created Article, all? Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 lines out exactly what the federal government can and cannot own. And uh, there's thing there that, that authorizes them to own or possess land for the purpose of a national forest. Hmm. Wait, say that again. I think I missed that. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 clause says Clause 17. What? And that that clause lays out what property, what what property that uh, it gives. That's the the clause that grants the the federal government the authority that it can own property. Right. And lays out uh, uh, Washington D.C. not to exceed ten miles square, and, and any property bought for uh, arsenals, forts, and 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 it lay, it lines lays out what property the federal government can own. And there's nothing there that says uh, they can own any land for for a national forest so the sure. very fact that they they own or manage 80 percent of trinity county and in, in, in my view is absolutely unconstitutional so there shouldn't be a single for, uh, federal cop in this in this county at all the, you're the being trinity, the shasta trinity national forest and the six rivers national forest should be the shasta trinity state forest and the six rivers state forest and patrolled by california department of forestry that would be cool that would be cool, because you know what? You just, uh, uh, oh, hold on, sorry, I got sidetracked by something there. Yeah, well, that's interesting, because uh, I know that's one of the things that the real Nye County Sheriff, he was, um, you know, butting heads with them because the feds were coming in, and I think that they were taking a rancher's uh, cattle. Yeah. And, I mean, just literally, they were stealing a rancher's cattle, so that they could get the cattle off that property, and then once the cattle don't have them, then it would take away his water rights. And, I mean, it was just like a bunch of crooked, like, it, it just, when you read the articles, I don't know if you guys are familiar and none with that, it, but And it, none of that can happen, especially on private property. None of that can happen without the sheriff's consent. They do not come in and do any of that equity unless the sheriff allows it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what I wish they well, would understand? Is that I think, uh, and I've said it on this show before, as a matter of fact, I've said it to people in this county uh, that aren't exactly on my side, but I think people would be surprised if they only knew that the person that they're judging so harshly for being a marijuana user, that may be the only difference between them philosophically, you know, uh, in terms of what they believe, what they're willing to stand up for, what they're willing to do in terms of their neighbors in their neighborhood. And uh, so I wonder if these guys, when they like to go around jacking people up and throwing them against their car and stuff for just a little bit of personal, if they really understand uh, how much harm they're doing to themselves in terms of what good citizens might do to help them out. No, I don't think they do. I think they're just doing a great job. That's what their their bosses are telling them to do. That's, that's the law, <laughs> and, the boss, and they think they're doing a great job. <laughs> kind of like the young bull and the old bull, right? <laughs> Let's run on down there. Yeah, okay. Oh, boy, that's funny. Well, let me ask you this. Here's something that I've, I've heard recently in our county. The pot trade's filling our county with transients. What say you? Well, transients, we have the uh, the annual influx, uh, typically during the month of September when when trimmers come in from outside the county and, and do some work and trim some marijuana for some of the growers and make some money. And then after the trimming's done, they, they depart and go back to where they came from. And, and uh, all those folks have gone this year. Uh, we do have a, a still a pretty significant uh, transient population, but they're, they're not trimmers. They're, I, I talk to these guys regularly, and um, they're, they're a semi-permanent uh, transients that are living here. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's a misnomer. Or it's, it, it's, it's a misnomer that they're, they're, all these people that are hanging out here are trimmers. They're, they're not. The, the trimmers have already left. Yeah, and it's probably not, and, and we probably can't talk about whether it has a, anything to do with code enforcement. Is that right? Uh, I, I don't follow. I don't follow your line of questioning. I mean, do you think some of these people that uh, are looking pretty disheveled now and out there, uh, you know, sort of homeless in our county, used to have a place to live in our county until some? Uh, code no, I don't think that's. The, I don't marijuana. think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. Okay, I just want. I mean, there, I, at least I haven't come across any. A, a lot of these folks are originate from other states. 
Yeah. What do you think about them there? State to state to state, and then and they'll stay here for a while, and then they'll move on someplace else, and others will come in, and, and a lot of them. You talk to them; they've been in every every state in the nation. Oh wow! And you think they're just there because it's like the forest, or what? Mm. Oh, it's a beautiful area, and they. I mean, they they they're attracted to to beauty, just like uh, somebody that has a house and a, and a roof over their head. Uh, right. Uh, I mean. Just because they're homeless don't mean they don't like looking at uh, or living in a nice area. Right. Mm-hmm. But they And they don't cause any really problems? Well, historically, we haven't had any problems. Uh, as of late, uh, with the influx, I have been finding uh, some thefts and property crimes involved with these folks, mm. which is not a good sign. Mm. Right. Hey, man, I wonder how much, like, a couple hundred and fifty thousand dollars could have done to, like, you know, solve that problem from a societal point, from a, you know, never mind. Uh, <laughs> right, could have bought a couple, could, could have bought a couple vehicles, <laughs> how, about a, how about a law enforcement <laughs> question, a couple, before we, we lose your expertise? Uh, I'm a little concerned these days about probable cause. I mean, you know what, I'm an activist, uh, you know, uh, Mike Booten, marijuana, uh, you know. I'm worried about probable cause. I'm worried that, you know what, there's no scenario whereby I get pulled over, you know, anywhere around here and, and people go, oh, yeah. You know, it's almost like Snoop getting pulled over, right? They want to, like, sick the dog on the bus. That's not probable cause, right, just being a weed guy? Um, no. Um, um but- but <laughs> lay, lay, lay me out a question or, or a situation. I, I don't oh, know where to go with that. Okay, like let's say, for example, uh, I mean, listen, I, I have this show. I openly talk about marijuana. I openly. Uh, oh, okay. I, I follow where you're going. No, absolutely not. That's not probable cause. Oh, you're Mike Booten. You must have weed. Get out of the car. And negative. Right. Violation of your Fourth Amendment right. Right. Okay. That was my next question was, what can people do to protect themselves from, like, these federal guys and stuff? Uh, is having your own, like, dash cam system, uh, is that legal? I mean, can you can you film your interactions uh, before and after? Absolutely. Your- and then we just there was just a big uh, court case on that uh, in, um, I forget which state it was. I was just reading about it this morning, the, the Supreme Chicago. Court rule on that, that, that you can, in a public place, uh, um, film. Uh, police, uh, police doing their job in a public place because the, I think it was Maryland or Indiana, I forget which. They, they uh, made it illegal for you to film police performing their duties in a public place, and it was only with a 15-year prison system. Or a sentence. Holy cow! Oh my God, yeah. that's ridiculous. Well, they yeah. had that and, Halloween candy. Well, huh? at least. At least the courts uh, got that one right. They said, "No, you can you can film the the police uh, performing their duty in the in a public place." Wow. Well, if your behavior is admirable, you would think you would want it filmed. Well, it, it's, right. it's a double-edged sword. Uh, mo- most cops have uh, dash cams, and and they're recording right. and filming the the people in a public place. Why is it not uh, what good for the goose is good for the gander? Right. And you know one thing I think people forget. I think people forget that in the age of cars that have computerized operational stuff, you know what? They keep a record of, of uh, you can, like, you know, pull that out and put it on a graph. You can, you know, see all of the parameters. I mean, that's sort of a defense, I think, right there in and of itself. You know, if you were supposedly to have been going 85 miles an hour, I think your car is going to probably say you weren't. Yeah, I, I don't know if that uh, technology is uh, available or how much problem it would be to uh, actually extract that from your vehicle's computer. Well, I don't know. I've never had that uh, issue come up. I think it's part of the – have you seen where where uh, insurance companies will give you a, a better rate if you plug their little thing into – their little reader into your your car? No, I haven't. That's, that, that's yeah. an interesting concept. Right, see, because it can tell if, you know, you're driving around on two wheels, they're going to say, no, man, you don't get the cheap rate because we're going to probably end up buying something you ran over. Sure. 
So I think in that sense, uh, you know, I don't know for a fact, but it occurred to well, me. Well, I know they, I know they, the, the courts have shot down the, the GPS technology. You know, uh, even the, the trackers uh, now. Uh, previously, that uh, law enforcement could stick a GPS tracker on a vehicle to track its uh, movements, and, and now uh, the courts have said, no, you can't do that without a search warrant. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's, because really, I mean, come on, I. I I don't know. I just laugh sometimes because, uh, I don't know. I, I was going to start to talk about a story that I should probably leave alone. Julie, <laughs> a question or two. <laughs> Julie, I was leaning on you there. I, I said, you must have a question or two. I, I, was, I was sort of leaning on you there. Oh, okay. I couldn't hear you. I, I keep cutting out. Um, so you're gonna. So it sounds to me from that you have a very common sense potential sheriff here, and I don't know what can people do to get you to run. I mean, it sounds like you need them, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, and I still do. Well, I, like I say, I, I've, there's there's some people that are talking and, and uh, looking at putting for putting together a campaign and a campaign committee. And uh, this time around, uh, you know, last time I just jumped in at the very last minute, didn't have, uh, put forth much of a campaign. You know, it was a last minute deal, and 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 now we're looking at maybe uh, if I do make the leap, which it looks like I'm going to because of all the interest that I'm getting. Uh, we'll start much earlier and put together a more robust campaign with some some serious folks backing me. Awesome. When's the next election? Uh, 14. The primary will be, um, I, I should be in June of 14. So oh, that's well, not too fast. That's, that's only about a year and a half down the road. Right. Yeah, time and it comes get, fast, too. Yeah, time to get moving. Because it can't just be about signs. It can't just be about art, you know, and it can't be about, you know, uh, uh, you know, photo ops and stuff. It has to be about policies that affect real people's lives. And I don't That's see where it. I come down on the whole campaign and thing. You, you know, all the ads that people put out and all the money that they spend uh, doesn't really do anything for me. It, it, for me, and maybe I'm just crazy, but it, it for me it depends on what their policies are, what their history are was, and uh, what kind of character the person has. You know, how they're gonna how they're gonna do the job. I don't, you know. I think we're missing a big chance right now because I think if one thing we learned from Washington, from Colorado, from all the other things that are going on around our country just the other day, that the head, the entire, the chief of like Indiana State Police came out and said, you know what, if y'all want to relax marijuana laws, go ahead. I don't care. I mean, right. it's so and Montana, Montana just got an initiative uh, uh, so, with all of the appropriate signatures. They're going to have legalization on the ballot in 14. Yeah, and here we are in, like, the crazy coolest best place on the planet, practically, to grow top-quality medicinal cannabis, and everybody's acting like it's the devil. And, and so we, you know what, I'm not asking Well, for uh, not everybody's acting like it's the devil. I think there's a, just a squeaky few that uh, are, are in positions of authority and, and want to uh, shove their morals down the majority's throat, I think, is what the situation is. Uh, hey, we could have a great Napa Valley thing going here, and I think that's probably where we need to go, and, and we need somebody that's not going to kick people's ass just for a plant. So uh, I'll tell you what, Cannabis Nation Radio will support you, and uh, I can say that with uh, absolute certainty. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, listen, I ran right up on out of time even, and so with that, we're just actually going to have to say goodbye and say thank you, Mark, for coming on. Uh, when you make that announcement or we get further and closer in, we'll have you on again so we can define uh, some of those positions even further. Great deal. Thanks, Mike. All right. Good night. You guys have a good, good one. Night. Good night. Good night. All right, so, you know, Julie, I'm a firm believer in no victim, no crime. I mean, I can't find a victim when it comes to marijuana, except people who have come into contact with law enforcement while in possession of some. Uh, we chase ghosts while real criminals have made our streets a war zone on the back of black market profits due to prohibition. I suppose if someone could tell me why, other than the fact that we ended alcohol prohibition, that there are no more murders on the streets of Chicago on Valentine's Day, then you know what? I'll understand a little bit better, but they can't. Well, you know, it's hard to find heroes in the war on drugs unless you want to tout the guys who, despite 
threats to their careers, tell the truth about what they are being asked to do. These guys have real experience and real facts, and we ought to listen to them. I think we are starting to see the conversation begin around the world, and with the passing of recreational marijuana use laws being passed in Colorado and Washington State. Yeah, and maybe now that we have a lame duck president, you know, who really, like, I mean, he can't be hurt in 2016. Maybe we'll get some top-down movement. I don't know. But if not, you know what? We'll still be here pushing the rock up the hill. It's just that important because, you know what, folks? I know a lot of people think this is hyperbole, but I believe this is the biggest civil rights issue of our time. You know what? Until then, though, and until next week, be safe out there, and good night from CannabisNationRadio.com. Good night. You're listening to Cannabis Nation with your hosts, Mike Budin and Julie Rose, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 